that could happen to me. Turn me to another man. Turn me to another man. Turn me to another man. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your presence, your power. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your glory in the house. Thank you for what you started on Monday. Thank you for what you did all through the week to yesterday. Thank you for what you are said to do again this morning. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Our lives and ministries shall never ever be the same again. In Jesus Christ's great name, we pray three loud Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Um, well, we must always thank God for the rain. I believe that any day, any time, rain is a blessing. But sometimes it can disturb some activities. Like I said earlier, I got some messages from Lagos of pastors that promised coming for this event. So it started raining in Lagos from 7 a.m. And it just non stop. So it's a bit of a challenge for some of them to come. And we move within the town. But oh God is going to do what he is said to do. We have two sessions today. This is specifically for ministers and those who have sensed God's call in their lives. And of course, the evening meeting is for every one of us together. Baba is here, and I believe he is set, loaded, and full of the blessing of the gospel for us this morning. We well, thank you so much, Sam, Daddy, for availing yourself to be with us at this time in spite of your very extremely busy schedule you made out time for your children to come and be part of what god is doing and building in our lives we appreciate you so much and we do not take you for granted can we please rise on our feet as we honor jesus and welcome our father reverend isaac god bless you daddy. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, morning meetings are not usually attended except by people who are serious. Nobody gives his morning time away just like that. So you're coming this morning. But if I not this morning, which for many is about the only free morning you have all week to do house chores, clean the house, wash your dress, take care of your children. So I place a very high premium on your coming. And it's also part of my prayer to God that God will see it as your investment. Amen. Into the blessing you are going to get. Amen. Because you have to invest something for what you get from God. That's why he told the disciples they should go and wait in Jerusalem. That's the investment. Go and wait. If you say you have somewhere to go, well, you can go. Go and wait. And it's more difficult to wait when the waiting has no term. It's more difficult to wait when the waiting has no term. Do you understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes. When the waiting has no 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 end point, go and wait there for how long? Would you please go and wait? How long are we waiting? Excuse me. Did you hear what I said? Go and wait. We've got other things to do. You can go and do other things. We've got other plans. Please go and work out your plans. But if you want power, go and wait. 
Ah. Because that is what you ah. get. Ah. And you don't need anything else. Yeah. So if you don't understand <laughs> that, you yeah. can then go for other things. Yes. But there is that one thing which when you get, ah. you don't have to ask for other things anymore. Because whatever you don't have, power gives you. So it takes a clear understanding of the commodity in transaction. Yes. When you are coming to a power school like this, <laughs> in order for you to know what to invest, how much, and for how long. When you are saying, go and wait there, you are saying, for how long? And that's the reason there were not many people waiting there. Yeah. There were only 120 in a three years ministry of where people ate bread and fish in their thousands. Only 120. That is it. So I thank you all for daring the rain, daring the difficulties in coming in the rain. Like Pastor said, rain is a blessing. But Elijah told her, he said, Ron, that this rain does not stop you. So rain can stop you. But those who could not be stopped by rain, Amen. you're welcome. Glory. You're welcome. I met the last speaker speaking on very fundamental issues in ministry. And I do not want to look away from what he said because they are so serious and important. I will find a way to key into where he stopped so I can continue because he did not finish his message because of me. He had respect for the fact that I was on ground and I needed to speak, so he laid a foundation and left. I will build in on it. Lord. Because they are not issues we can wait away. I'm trying to find uh, a different topic for myself. But if I have to continue what he was saying, I will have to research to a kind of amalgamation to find union. But he spoke about ministry definition by letting you know that the amount of power you need is related to your ministry definition. That's what I'm trying to recoin. Ministry definition. Isaiah said, and I heard a voice that said, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? You see, there has to be what you are about. There has to be what you are about. Power tools are given in their varieties according to the definition of your assignment. If you are called to be a teacher, you must be a talker. If you are called to be a prophet, your words must be few. So we are looking at two different people in the world management. Am I, am I at your level? Yes, sir. Oh, I have left you behind. Do you understand what I mean when I said word management? That is managing the world. You see, it's the same word, it's the same Bible in front of us, but somebody else who has a call to be a teacher, he will be talking and talking and giving examples and even come to a point where he will say, do you understand? If you say you don't understand, then you go and explain again. You give an example, you can go back and start to rerun his talk. Now, a prophet will say, God says the Lord. If you understand, fine. <laughs> if, you, if you don't understand, now you know. Because he cannot act. 
Do you understand his limitation? Yes, sir. Ministry has to be understood in its schools. A prophet cannot add. So when he asks you, when the Lord says the Lord, blah, 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 he does not even ask whether you understand. <laughs> because if you don't understand, now you won't be that. <laughs> and in the interlock and interdependence of ministry, when the prophet comes and says, God says the Lord, the reason why you are poor in this church is because you are not paying tight. If you pay tight, says the Lord, the windows of heaven will open upon your business and you begin to make a lot of money, says the Lord God of hosts. He goes to sit down. Then somebody now come and say, please watch his tight. It is not the prophet's business to explain. The teachers. The teachers in the ministry now come and explain what is that. The 10% of your profit. That is right. Then somebody said he paid it. And food money short. And the wife is packing out. That's where the pastor comes in. So I'll be out of room, Captain. They say, why is my madam not coming to church again? He said that since the day the prophet told us about tight, and the teacher explained it to us, and I paid it full money, no rich. <laughs> but don't, don't go. <laughs> now it is the pastor who now goes after the woman and then see what else we can do. That managing the people. So I have spoken about three offices that have worked together in the same assembly over the same matter. And one does not cross into the other person's zone. No. The person comes and says, the reason we are not blessed is because we are not paying time. That's what he was told to say. He cannot act. If he has to say, the reason you are not blessed is because you are not paying time. And those of you who are selling here, you don't go now. That one, <laughs> that one, you know, rich. The thing when I tell you, talk about it. You know, rich. That's why I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, in ministry definition, individuals have to cultivate their area of passion. In the work of God. Somebody asked me, how do I know my gift? How do I know the area, my own area? You know your own area, one, by revelation, two, by calling. Somebody, a senior can call you. A senior can call you. It's like, what Paul said, he said, when Barnabas saw the grace of God that was upon my life, he brought me to the apostolic ring. I used to sit outside. When I came from the road to Damascus with the encounter I had and the call of God upon my life, Barnabas wasn't there. I had a call when Jesus said, you are going to be a minister to the Gentiles and to the kings and so on and so forth. That's my call. But when I came to Jerusalem to the church, nobody knew me. I sat at the back. But whenever they are discussing in Sunday school, I raise up my hand and answer and sit down. Whenever we are interacting, whenever we are saying something, whenever we are doing something, mm. there are seniors who are looking. Mm. And he said, when Barnabas saw the grace of God that was upon my life, he brought me 
and ask the apostles to move and find me a seat among them. Say, move, this man should sit here. Now, there are seniors who are watching you in the process of your doing little, little stuff in church. When we ask you, now, we are the rest that you came, we also know those who did come. Yes. Now, we are looking at you. We are looking at how you are managing the difficulties. We are looking at how you are managing the, 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 the commitment. We are looking at you, how you manage the time. If we overstay here now, some of you carry your bag and go. Nobody's going to stop you. We note it. Nobody's going to stop you when you carry your bag and you are going. But we do what? When we are asking, we don't have money again, they are going to drive us out of here. You have three vehicles, you went and sold one and brought the money. We note it. How can I know how many cars you have? Barnabas had land, he went and sold the land and brought the money. That gave him a place in the apostolic report. And we are reading it today. Whatever you are doing, we note it. And whenever there is need for a higher calling, we can call you. Yes. Don't wait till God, we are also God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I put a small G. Yes. <laughs> David said, he said, have you not heard that ye are? Give us that allowance. We can look at you. We can look at you. Yes. We, can. we also can. We are leading the world. And we know where there are pitfalls in the work. We know where you can fit in. We can assess you by, the, by your journey with us. When they wanted to replace Judas Iscariot, you remember what they said? They said, let us look among us and choose from among those who have been coming in and going out with us. We know those of you who look this and say, Naso it be, say, Naso it be, say, 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 another day. We know it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That is the reason you need to work closely with seniors. Nobody has ever come up behind the seniors. It is the person who is up that can draw somebody from down. Then you yourself. You can identify your area of call when you see that there are certain things in general service that you achieve with minimum effort. That's your call. So you say, I don't know my call. You can know your call. Where certain things with minimum effort you have achieved it. But this is what somebody else you toil and toil to achieve. You get there, you put your hand to it, the smallest of skill and touch, it's done. That is your area of God. Because you didn't invest and you are achieving. So what will happen when you invest? People have done IBGL, it has a no green. You come, you read Psalm 23, they also. That's your point. Then you now know that if, if you add VG to your own, if you add fasting to your own, you will fly. Whatever you are able to achieve using minimum effort, and you achieve it, that is if you put more effort in there, you will fly. Finally, whatever you enjoy with passion, you are passionate about it. That's your call. There are other things they are teaching you, they are calling you, they are doing meditation. You know, the thing will click inside your mind. You don't get work there. 
but there are areas that you yourself you enjoy doing it. Whenever they are saying we are going with tracts to give uh, tracts on the streets of evangelism, you are happy about it. What you are happy about, somebody's else, they might be they do good, 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 good. So if we give him tracts now, the man vexed. You have not given him. There will be all kind of negative questions that will be coming. If I give him track now and he demands and insult to me, you have not given him. This was saying if you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. This one, ready, I don't close finish. You have not given him. Are you following me? You have not given You see cancer that is bursting, and they pack it with toy. The odor is very offensive, and you want to put hand on it. The odor come at you. You take your nose to one side, and you are about to pray, and your mind is saying, "This one that don't die finish." If I lay hand now and the man die, you will be making her. Then some other person, the moment he saw that they were bringing it, he's already rejoicing that he has made one more miracle. He has it in his day. He has it in his day hand yet. He's already rejoicing that he's now having one more testimony. But this is your own mind that they do poo, poo, poo. It's the devil's effort to drive you away from your core. And Jesus will be watching you. It's up to you to shake it off and move on. Or oblige in the negative thoughts that make you disbelieve yourself and disbelieve your God. When all these and many more have successfully been managed by you in identifying that looks like I'm a teacher, looks like I'm a seer, looks like I'm a dreamer, looks like I'm a preacher, it looks like I'm a prophet, it looks like I'm a miracle worker. Now when we now come into power school and the Bible says that the Holy Spirit was coming down, if you read it in Yoruba, only a la hosi so kanda. Only si we are ready. Say the big 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 ye aha yo koni. But if that offer the only a way no. Over split. A tumba ni ni. Only a to see a tumba ni ni. Over allocate ministry. He may not even allocate ministry. He won't part yet. But by the same spirit, by what you read, when Paul was talking to the Corinthians, he said it's by the same spirit. Only a aha yo kono so kanda. So when that tumba the only a way yo. Oh say ni. Oh we are ready. And that is where he began to assign ministry. I say, you take your own. You take your own. You take your own. By the same spirit. They say, bro, what do you think? They say, what do I think? They say, Maybe. Everybody has told So you don't have any idea. <laughs> on the day that power comes, you get nothing. You go home empty. Because you have no idea. Nothing. Nothing. And we have them in church. When Elijah told, told his servant to go, he, the man was praying. He has told, he has made an announcement that I've had the sound of abundance of rain. He had told everybody. Then he told his servant to go and look whether the rain that he had has started to fall. So when we speak, we want to see. So go and look. He came back and said, nothing. He went seven times, nothing. He said, nothing about that. And that is the reason why he never got anything. They dropped him somewhere and go and pick him out. <laughs> Come and talk, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
The man of God is praying. He said he has heard the sound. He proclaimed, he said, I have run so that this rain will not catch you on the road. And the man stayed back and put his head in between his knees and was crying to God to make what he has had to become sin. And I, I as a seer, I borrow your eye. I said, go to the sea and see whether you have been able to cite what I said. You came back seven times and you said it's the son of God. You will never be anything. <laughs> Wow. If you see nothing, you get nothing. You never be anything. In chapter 19, Elijah dropped him in Bathsheba and went away. It was then he met Elisha and he took Elisha. And this Elisha is a person you say, Would you stay here? God sent me to give me. I say, I know stay. I know this. Can you stay here? God sent me to the other. I say, I know this. Stay. Now, go, go, go. go. <laughs> now, that one, they told him, I want to do this. Like this <laughs> 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 one, they would do stay here in Bazima because they just And there was no further reference to him till the Bible closed. <laughs> 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 I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna show you. So they put him, will you stay here? I said, yes. <laughs> he stay here when they go. <laughs> Elijah, Elijah told him, would you stay here? I said, I will stay. <laughs> because it's a nothing program. There are nothing people. If you have them around you, when you finish this church, you are disconnected. Sir. There are nothing brothers. If you are their friend, they don't. Nothing, sister. If you put them in your shop, you won't sell it. <laughs> From money. <laughs> if you come with the evening to close account, is it there? Is that <laughs> People, then, they know they pass here today. They know what they work out past here. Now, you don't sit down here for years and money, say yes. <laughs> if you go and collect corporate income, I go and take bank loan and you put it there and you carry it, nothing, brother. Now, you enter that. <laughs> they are inside church. <laughs> you put them in charge of anything, you get nothing. You pray, 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 nothing. You fast, nothing. They are there. I am praying that God will disconnect you. Amen. If you like, say amen. 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 When ministry definition has been asserted, and you are now in search of the tool, that's why when you were in school, faculty of agree. Year one, year two, year three, you are doing general agree. When we are approaching year four, I saw it agree. Then they begin to ask you, which area of agree do you think you will want to take your degree? One year, two year, three, they would have spoken to general agree. There's something we didn't study. We study insect. <laughs> and tomorrow the insect. We study cockroach. Now, we did agree go. We study everything, including insects. You study snail. <laughs> Never told you. You study at all. <laughs> that if you are in a place where there is plenty of art, there are things you can use to know. The place is fertile for agri. But when you talk, talk all that finish in year three, when you are reaching year four, the lecturer asks you, now we are showing you which area of the family would you like to specialize? Some say soil. Some say water. Some say water. Some say soil. So you will no more attend any other lesson till you go. You will be attending soil lecture. Some say plant, crop. You will no longer attend any other lecture till you go. It is crop. Those of us who said we are going to animal. You never study any other thing to be close from school except poultry, pigree, uh, rat, <laughs> grass cutter, sheep and goat, cow. <laughs> you specialize in that one. But some say fishery, say they carry you to water. God stays silence by the riverside till you finish. What are we saying? It is like that in ministry. When we come like this, we are exposed to different salaries. 
You see, you sit down there and sit quiet and sing. You will not be. You see ushers at the door. You see drama people. You see some school teachers. You see prayer bands. We are exposing you to every area. After a while, after a while, we don't want to see you sitting down in church doing nothing. How is it that of all that we are doing, not one will be appealed to you? You are a nothing sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing I'm telling you, that's how I told them my church, you are nothing, brother. And we don't want you in our church. Mm. Mm. <laughs> because that's your seat you are occupying. We need somebody else to sit here. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> we need somebody else who will be profitable. We need, we, we need you to go away from this church. So that some other person can come. You see, we have to be daring to tell you the truth. Because if you don't go, somebody else won't come. Not everybody in the church will stay. And when we bring this understanding to the notice of our people in the church, everyone, you, in, in a year, there are people in the Lord who came to me after the COVID, post COVID, that they want to sell their church. And he, I asked him how much. He told me, and I said, ah, this price is too much. He said, there are still some people there. So he want to sell the job close. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell those people that you are selling everything? <laughs> I said, this is a bad business for me. Because if I go and buy it and change signboard and the people move. I don't show it to you. <laughs> I show it This price is too much. He said, sir, there are still about 20 people left. 20 people. So you want to sell the job clause, the 20 people. And you have not told them that you are selling them. <laughs> to know whether they will stay or not. So that's bad business for me. Because after COVID, church no full again. A lot of churches in the world are closed. But because of the upbringing that I did in my own life, after COVID, church, our church starts Sunday by 8 o'clock. By 7.30, you can't find seats in my own church. See today, if you don't come early, you will not find seats. We told them, we don't want useless people. Other churches need you, go there. It's not here. Don't come and sit down here. How can you be in a church for 10 years? You're not doing anything. Yeah. What type of church is that? What type of member is that? We don't want you in our church. There are those who want you in their churches for statistics. <laughs> you understand? Yes, sir. Men. <laughs> 200. Women. 300. Children. New command. There are those who need you in their church for those uh, analysis. So you are analysis brother. <laughs> Go there. We don't want you in our church. You must be in a fellowship. You must be somewhere that is working and producing. Mm. Everybody in the church must be active, doing something. Yes, because you identify the area of service you need yes. to domestic yes. and you go there and sit down there and domesticate yes. the word of God that you have been hearing in service. Hallelujah. We want to see what we're teaching you in service. service. We want to see what Christian you are through service. Service. Mm. If you say you are a medical doctor, how do we know? If you say you are a lawyer, how do we know? If you say you are a nurse, how do, you, how, how do we know? We want to know through service. Mm. We want to know as you are doing it. Mm. What's the meaning of this one? You are a church, you are not doing anything. Mm. Who is supposed to respect your membership? Mm. And it is what you are doing that is empowered. Jesus said, any tree in me, any branch in me that produce, we dress it so it can produce more. After many 
ministry definition. We call to empowerment. Lord, I'm a teacher. Give me the tongue of the learned. Lord, I'm a seer. I need a third eye. Are you following me? Yes, sir. I'm a seer. I need another eye. If you don't have another eye, you will be like every other person. Lord, thank you. Looks like I'm a prophet. I need prophetic precision. If I say there will be rain by 10 o'clock, it, it will be cloud will start for me at night. We are in a meeting and we're looking for a document. Who has it? The prophet got up and said, check your file. That's what I do. With the prophet, you labor less. Because you are guided. When the axe head, the prophet said, Where did the axe head for his name that he had to That one is shouting, Hey, hey, you are going to hear my master. Who is shouting there? Keep quiet. Keep the story. Where did the axe head for his name that he had to This one, they cry, If you hear them, you are going to when we reach down, say, You, the new prophet, you can't buy axe. You go and ask. So you have been doing content. Come back. Me that I'm not doing prophet, I'm the one that has as you come here, come and come and follow us. I didn't even say I won't follow you, but when you use prophet, throw us, throw us, we ask them. You can go and find it in the house. You don't want anybody to be here. That's why the man carrying her and goes and says, yeah. Because you know the woman that for whom you go to the house, you know that she's very good. If you return to town and say, you know, because I asked her for it. And you know, in my ass, I ain't got That is, hey, my master, I was waiting. The prophet said, who is shouting there? Please, don't disturb the service. Where did you do for it? He said, what's the prophet? That's the prophet. With the prophets, we live on it. We do prophets. We do what? Around the bar, graduated from you and the first class of my books. And that is how we were still doing crusade in Ife on the night preceding the Panayel. He arrived from Ife and slept. I was too tired to read. An angel came in the night and woke him up. I said, tomorrow morning, these are the questions that are coming up. Stand up and write it. And find the answer. You can sleep again. I believe I graduated with first class in Europe. Nobody could even employ him. United Nations gave him a job in New York. With the prophets, he worked less. He achieved more. You don't understand. Yes, sir. Blessed are those who understand. With the prophets, you work less and achieve more. In the same you are. <laughs> My old friend, we are in agree. But well, it was in such times. There's a certain insect. It's not tonight. It doesn't come out in the night. In the, in the, it's, it's daytime, daytime insect. It doesn't come out in the night. But we're reversing, for example, tomorrow morning. This insect does not come out at night. It flew into the hall where they were reading. My friend, sir, was he opened the page of the, the, the textbook he was reading. This insect was the one, the picture on that page that he was reading. The insect flew into the hall in the night and landed on its own picture. My friend closed the book and went to sleep. 
tomorrow morning. He, he told me, he said, you can go. Because he came here to make a national fair. He said, <laughs> <laughs> The way you are looking at me, if you work with prophets, you will see strange things. But that's what makes you a prophet. If you are normal with everybody, you can it. He closed the book and said, yeah, thank you. You came here to make an answer. The following morning, this research was question number one and compulsory. <laughs> My friend had called all his those of us who formed a ring in school that this insect is coming out tomorrow morning because it came here tonight to see you. <laughs> <laughs> This is not in the answer that comes out at night. <coughs> if you are a prophet, you see, the insect came, sir, and hit the globe, bam, and then landed on the globe. I pray that your spirit man will be refined to understand spiritual things. Yeah. To be able to decode words and signs and read signs. You are a sign reader. So you can, you can see what everybody is seeing, but you can understand more than what the, everybody is seeing, but not everybody understands what it is. May God God grant you understanding heart Amen. to be able to know the signs Amen. and read the signs. Amen. This way you will not be going about like the ordinary brother that you are. You will not be going about like the ordinary sister that you are. Because there is something that you are spiritually sensitive. Listen, when God told Elijah that I have commanded the widow woman to feed you and sustain you in that heart, it takes spiritual sensitivity and understanding. You know how many women are passing by. It will take you to look at this one, could it be this one, could it be this one? No. Then you move on. And he never gambled. The very woman, because the prophetic sentence that directed him did not say he will be a fair complexion woman, he will be a tall woman, he will be a robust woman. He just said, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. It will take you to raise your antenna, to raise your capacity to discern and to understand and to be able to interpret and be sensitive. Sister, can I get a muscle of bread from you? Question one. But that one said yes. Oh, could you please wait? Then he knew it. That's the one. Could you please wait? Bring water with you. So, you see, you test the waters when you are not sure. But you have to be a spiritually sensitive person to be able to expand the answer you are getting, to fix it into the frame of what you are carrying. You are empowered after you have guaranteed your spiritual ministry definition. I will close on character. The character housing for the gifts. Sir, this is a household. Okay. This is what we do. Um, the people who made the reasonable also develop a house here for the reason. Can I stop for a moment to ask you why you think that is important? Just getting this glass is very important. But to have a house, I will say. The people who develop the glass also develop the Why do you think this house is important? If nobody has an idea, that's the end of this lesson. <laughs> that's the end. Now go with the gospel. If you don't understand what I'm asking you and you have no idea, that is the end of this morning lecture. 
Till two years time. Why? <laughs> Why do you think the person who made this reading glass, he has succeeded in making reading glass, but he did not end his work there. He developed the housing for it. I'm asking you, why do you think this housing is important for the reading glass? This is your eye. This is your eye. Say what? From getting spoiled. It can fall to the ground. If it fell to the ground in this housing, you pick it. But if it is the glass that fall, it can break. People who are asking for power, they forget about the house. type of housing. There are some other housing they design it differently from this. There are some that even look like a viral pair. You put it here in your pocket. The your eye glasses are there. Just, just cover your eye ball. And they, they design it in different ways. There are some that are designed in triangle. They design them according to the, the eye glass that is inside. Your housing for your gift and talent is designed according to your person. Your personality. There is the character housing for every gift. There's a character that houses the Small matter, you are hungry. You are hungry. <laughs> Sir, if by any mistake God put authority on your tongue, you will be killing people. Oh, then go this way. Go on the floor, you will be able to have a party. That's why he was saying that if certain things are not in place in your life and they give you power, you will even use the power to destroy yourself. Something was powerful. And you are going to bring down a house, son. For the two years, we have to do a lot of <laughs> Bros, Samson, thank God for this. If you want to bring that this, I'll go out. <laughs> I'll push the house from us. <laughs> Something to <laughs> do. I know brothers. Otima Binu so amoro kotoro ni. These brothers I'm talking about, they would have said, we are even, we were in a meeting where we were pulling them down. Let me say that. I don't know. We are in a place in Oduapen, 1979. And a brother in the prep, a brother was professor, professor. When I saw that the way this professor was going, I said, boss. They tell us what to do, only get us what they want. Let me say that. See, I don't want to be in a place where I cannot say my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but this is prophecy. <laughs> prophecy, this one is too much. He said, look, if you want me to be amended this minute, let me say my mind. Prophecy is not, you're not saying your mind. Now you have even said your mind, now we are not happy. <laughs> Only for us, bro, I saw that I wrote a point. This prophecy is too much. He said, please let me 
is in my mind. And that's him. When he starts talking, you can't stop him. And the prophet must know where prophecy ends. If he has anything he wants to add, because there may be something you want to add, Paul said, when he was writing to the Corinthians in chapter 7, he said, this is what the word of God says. He said, but this is my own counsel. You must separate where the prophecy starts, stops with whatever idea you have. Let your audience know the separation. You must be skillful enough. Ministry is not for boys. Ministry is not for babies. Ministry, it, it, when you get them in, you have problems. When God calls someone, someone was a small boy, God calling small boys, we have problems. Somewhere, somewhere, because there's a problem we want to solve. Ella is too old, his boys are bad. We want to replace them. And when Anna came and said he wanted a baby, and if God gave him a baby, he would give the baby back to God to serve there. God said, I will give you one. I don't, because I need somebody here to give. And someone had not yet even grown to be mature enough when God started to call him, but we see we have a problem. Somewhere, Somewhere he got from yes sir, and he went to Ella. God called you. He go to man. And Eli told him, said, I didn't call you. He got paid second time. Somewhere, somewhere he got up again and headed the wrong direction. What puzzles me here is. Why didn't God stop him? I said, go bear and we call him I'm not bad by I'm about to tell you. I'll finish with him. Don't go there. Don't let him go. You see, God gives you a call. He choose your direction. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You choose your direction. See people that are like, saying, God called me, God called me. Call me. Then you are sending me away. God call me, God call me. We are not the contestant. You are selling uh, the selling what? A rapid. The selling what? Now nobody knows whether it's Lagos or not. He like to say, he like to say, God. Thank you. 
Something happened between the time I called him and the time I gave him ministry. I gave him work. Maybe his friend is shouting at the door. What are you standing there doing? We are going home. Very soon we will not go find your dad again. We will not go finish for road. Live there. What are you standing there again? And then he leaves and goes. He has a call, but he will not have. A call is just a call. It's just a call. Mm -hmm. And there are many people with call, with call sir. but they don't have mm -hmm. Because it takes a two to get this. And if while I gave you this viral and I said, go give it to daddy over there. And you got halfway and saw a friend who said, long time, no see. I said, eh, in fact, what happened was that when my uncle came from the United States, <laughs> from, go to the place where they said, I said, disruption. There was a member of my church, a woman. Her firstborn had a children in Chagam, and the backbone caught the two. And they carried the two together and dumped them in a certain hospital in Chagam. And we were cruising. And the woman came and said, My son had backbone caught, but he is still alive. Amazingly, he's still alive. He's in prison. And I've said that he should go and help me bring him. And I will remain on this crusade ground till they bring him. I will not leave. From in order to Shagam and come back, I said, This is where I'm going to stay. Crusade is ended. I said, Me, I'm going home. He said, You meet me here tomorrow. I came back the next day. I met the, man, the woman there. He said, They came in the night. And the young man was bleeding inside. And they are carried him to the University of Learning Teaching Hospital because he was bleeding inside and become pain. I said, I'll wait for you to let you know. I said, well, you see, I'm teaching a class. I don't have time to follow you. Is there any pastor around? He told me of one. I have 20 of them. Hmm. I said, look, is there any pastor around? Then they call another one. They are my pastors. I have them, they work with me. But for this kind of operation, I said, look. They started calling. You see, it's one of them. If it will come to peace, when I will be there, and God says there's nobody there, I want to die. That's why you read in the Bible that God knew that there was no man, and there are people there. Is there any pastor that should wear in the convention? Excuse me, every pastor ought to be here, and they were there. But who shall I send for this kind of operation? Then they called Francis. Francis came from Lokoja branch. I said, good, let Francis come. Francis, do your hand like this. So Francis did this. I put my hand on the hand. I said, Francis, follow this woman with this hand. And when you get to the teaching hospital, lay this hand on Fakai and tell him that I, as the commander, say he should be here. If anybody want to shake you on the road, don't shake it because there will be power leakage. Mm -hmm. Jesus said somebody touched me. Yes, sir. That virtue. Yes. So Francis carried hand like this. Was they got to teach him as usual. There were people who saw him in the road. Francis, which day you arrived? When I go back, he said, 
I'm on, I'm on air and I'm on top of it. Can I say to you, say, no, please, I'm serious. I have pastors. He will shake you first before you remember. That's him. Shake me. They are pastors. They are useful for other things. That Bafero knew a poor Abba. This Bafero never did it. Go by, go by, go by, go by. But this is the woman is. Woman is, woman is. Where nobody can roll the drum, you roll it. It's also one of those. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Francis, if anybody wants to shake you on the road, don't. Because there will be power leakage. He got to the hospital. The matron on duty said, Father, they don't even know where he is. They have attacked on him oxygen, drips, everything. He can't open eyes, can't see anybody. <laughs> Francis said, sir, uh, ma, now Baba Mole now he said, come here, and I cannot go back and report nothing. So Francis said, nothing, brother. He said, let me just lay hand on him and go. That's what Baba Mole said I should do here. Everybody in the Lord know me. Say, Baba Mole, say yes. He said, go inside, but don't stay long. Said, what am I going to stay long for? What I asked him to do, he has finished it. Yeah. But that is why Francis is Francis. Wow. So there are those that we send, and there are those who have something of their own to It's a not habitual excuse to us. Oh, you are still going back to the teaching hospital to see him. He said, yes, I go there every day to look after him. And I've been there this morning. How is he? He says, and when I got there this morning, I didn't find him. They transfer him to another ward. He said, no, sir. The metro told me that he woke up this morning. And all the limbs that have become paralyzed because of the backbone that has cut into two. He said, he moved his hand, hand moved. He moves his leg, leg move. That he uses his own hand to remove oxygen from his mouth. And remove all the drips that they put on him and stood up. And ask the matron, who brought me here? Because he didn't know when he was brought there. He was unconscious. He said, oh, I want to know who brought me here. What am I doing here? And that he had packed these things and have left. So I said, Francis, where, where did they say? He, they said he went back to his house. And he had the metro which address the dead used to register him when they brought him the say Garakobi. So he looked at the address and followed to Garakobi to go and look for him. You see why Francis is Francis. You been to his house this morning, said I've been there, sir. You saw him, he said, I saw him. When I knocked the door, he came out and opened the door. And he said, Let me walk for you to see. The back bone, back bone joint in one night. Nerves take time to heal when they are broken. This one healed overnight. And I said, Francis, can you take me there? He said, I've been there this morning. I can take you there. He took me there. I'm not telling you what, I, what somebody told me. This is my own ministry now. So I went there. I knocked the door. Father, they came out. That's why I call his name. He came out. He's a 400 level student in the UI. He came out and opened the door and said that the report he read of on his card was that his backbone cut him to do. He was aware when he had accident, but that's all he knew. Whatever happened after that, he was not aware. But he said, I am okay now, and I'm walking. As I speak to you, Father of days in the United States of America, and send me tithes every month. Where am I going? Is there any pastor around? Um, they call one name. Pastor, look at Is there any pastor? They are the full ground. We are in convention. They kept calling names until they called. Francis had a call. 
Francis got a ministry. And I am saying, even along the pathway of carrying out your ministry, you must have a character of compliance and obedience. Yes. Many of you are so rebellious. You are not known for being obedient. Yes, you are not known for carrying out instructions. You are a negotiator. Because some people have told you about the grace of God, what is in it? The grace of God. Which grace? Grace that does not obey instructions. I said, this, this hand is no longer your own hand. It's my hand and yours. But go there and lay it on me. The metron there said, don't stay long. He said, what, what am I going to stay? I have been told what to say. Because when I, when I saw him, I said, you, you try to say yes. You did pray for him. He said, you didn't ask me to pray for him. He said, what you ask me to do is to lay hand on him and tell him that he should work. Francis. He said, he said something I will never forget. He said, he said if I had my own and the things for anything born in the things of food, way in me, but born in me, people born in the area, yeah, the things of food, yes. And that's what I said. Is that all you said? You didn't pray for him. You didn't ask me to pray for him. Because if I had my own and the things, then you will look at me and that. You don't ask me to, you see. So how do you carry out? Do you have that type of character? It comes down to character that we can tell you what to do and you don't negotiate it. You don't compromise it. So the gift is given, but must be carried in a vessel and in a container of total obedience and character. Compliance. When God told Abraham, take your son and sacrifice. There's another person who was there. I bet let me sacrifice 100 good. That was no do. Let me give you 100 cow. God saw cow before he asked for some. Give him what he asked for. Something was so powerful. So manly. Wherever night falls, he sleeps there. No marriage. No son. No wife. No daughter. No friend. You remember the type of friend he had? They went to do that, they, they went to do introduction. That was the last time something went there. They were not seeing it. Again. It was the friend that was that kept going to ask after the woman. So one day, the hill of him, I bet, you can go with him. <laughs> you can go with him. So that's the kind of friend he had. The friend that go behind to carry the woman. When he saw the woman and told his parents, the parents said, ah, that kind of place is not the best to go and marry you. You cannot find a woman among the people. He said, I like it. There's no bench. There's no friend. Character. There's no power. You don't have friends. Power. You can do anything. You don't have wives. Huh? You are homeless. Whenever night fell, you see a priest, you go there and sleep. The king of Israel. Anointing will still be working. Even when you are messing up. It's like this fan. If light goes now, it will still be blown. But it's blowing to stop. Mm. So there are those ones you see in town, they are still blown. Sir. Pressing iron and light goes, it will still press scarf. <laughs> it will still be hot, but it's getting hot to go, go cold. You are 
are messing around saying, ah, but God is still with me. God is appearing. He's appearing to you to disappear. And they told Samson, they said, Plus, this way you are living is no good. He said, it's okay. After all, God is still working. I hear it, those John talk who say, God is still appearing to me. I hear a dream. God is still talking to me. He's still talking to you. To One day, Samson went out as at other times, and he did not know that God had disappeared and disconnected from him. I wish he knew. So he will not go out. Because the Bible says, after a while, the hair was growing back again. The lilac can remove the hair, but he cannot stop the hair from growing back again. That's how the Philistine captured him. The first thing they did was to remove his hair. When the enemy gets hold of you, the first thing he removes is to destroy your vision. One would have expected that the moment they got hold of Samson, the first thing to do is to kill him. No. The first thing they did was to remove his vision. Because they know if you are powerful and you don't have vision. Today you will be doing, uh, you will be a specialist in 9G. Tomorrow you will be doing specialist in Sunday school. Another time, if you hear again that they are washing head somewhere, you start. If you don't have river, you dig water. Because you don't have vision. And it starts from the fact that we might have a man who got a call. We have a man who got ministry. But he does not have character of obedience. He doesn't have a character of obedience. The container, the gift of God is put inside the container of character and obedience. And when there are character defects, and you pack, you pack everything in going on, there's a problem. Look at that problem. Like that message, they are saying, no, God is with you. You see the way Jacob was doing. Jacob was stealing people's things. And saying, after all, God appeared to him in God. So God is appearing to him. You quarrel with everybody. Right from your mother's stomach, the, the whole leg. It was a midwife that removed the hand of, of Jacob from the leg of Esau. They quarrel from inside, from, from, from inside the mother till the rich head. Now, my mom midwife, now he removed the hand and said, <laughs> Don't do nine months. Yeah. That's what the whole people. We got to labor, treat them. The father said he want to bless Esau. He got there, he said his name is not Jacob, his name is Esau. We don't know his name, his name is any name that can bring something. <laughs> That's why when he met them again, he started. Rest. Now I ask his name. <laughs> How can angel be asking your name? The angel knows his name, but the angel knew that this person had. He knew that. If you ask him now, if you look around and if to think about which name will be the best for this event. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the angel said, what's your name? Your father asked you the other day, what is your name? He said, you are Esau. Now I'm asking you again. So you connected your father's blessing that day. Your father blessed you that day because that name is your that said. Now you want to get my name. What's your name? Now this is God. Call yourself Esau again. So we we'll send you to labor. When, 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 when he got to labor and I said, what to marry wife? They said, you do labor. Seven years old, they didn't go on that seven. Since you are Esau. This is not the guy they think where you work for. This is not the guy they think where you work for. This one, when they said go and bring animal, he brought it late. He gave him remnant. 
If you are Esau, you will be walking carry home from here. Seven, <laughs> we will stop you after seven years. Seven years pass. He said, but that the woman, where I want money, he said, we know they do that one here. Now the other sister will manifest. He said, I still like this girl. Yeah, no problem. Where did you stop? Carry home. <laughs> carry home. <laughs> you are Esau. And Esau will get the thing with you. He told the agent, he said, uh, my name, eh? Yeah. Your name? But that's where the problem is. We don't know you. We don't know anything, no danger. Only there is always a girl born in Bethlehem. In Bethlehem, who said, maybe you're in Bethlehem. What's your name, sir? <laughs> I think well before you answer this time. You have to think well. Because this one you answered the other day, it cost you 14 years of labor mm. to marry wife. Mm. You have no hand in that. So, say, uh, my name is Jacob. Say, good. I will bless you now. But God told him in, 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 in where he had been, he will bless him. And he blessed him. He blessed him in the house of people. He blessed him everywhere, but the man is a thief. They steal people's things. Then his name is not steady. The name depends on the situation. I pray as I close that the blessing of God upon your life will not bring crisis. Amen. Amen. Because you have a, a, a character that is stable and dependent. If you have a character deficit, don't let us go for power. Let's first of all set to the issue of character stability. We should not find a sister that is into fornication and you want to be a prophetess. We should not find a brother that is it's a Yahoo brother, and you want to be a man of God. We don't want that. And we don't want you to come out and say, hey, Sebi, God is hearing the prayer. I've just told you, he can be hearing, but one day he will no more hear. And it will be the day that if he doesn't hear, they will kill you. Now, if Nepal goes now, this farm will not immediately stop. It will still be growing. But the power behind it has ceased. If you are driving a car and suddenly you need to stop, maybe a small boy joined the road or an elderly person is passing. It is not the moment you put your leg on the brake that the car will stop. It will be slowing down to stop. It will still be moving to do what? To stop. It will still be going to do what? To stop. And that's the state many people have. They say, ah, uh, after all, God is still here in uh, After all. I still dream. After all, I still pray and it happens. If there are items in our character that need to be sorted out, you sort it out before that thing sort you out. Let's rise up. There are things that pastor said earlier on that I don't want to push away. I have simply put my issue of definition. Are there people who are struggling with definition, with call definition, anointing definition, ministry definition? Some are saying, I don't know the area where God wants me to serve. And because of that, there is a huge gamble and a lot of spiritual gambling. Try this, try that, try too many things. And time is going. Time is going. For as long as you are trying and trying, you are shortchanging the longevity of service. Because when you are supposed to have started to serve, you are still experimenting. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, that everyone who is here will be very certain and sure of what ministry he wants to do. And the period of 
experiment has been expired. Amen. Let it be that from this morning session, everybody will acquire a direction. Amen. Nobody will be in doubt of what to do. Amen. Everybody will be certain of the area of service and ministry that God wants them to serve. I pray that you will get it by revelation. I pray that God will generate a passion in your heart that will choose that direction. I pray you will find joy in the direction of your service. I pray that you will be obedient to your seniors who will be able to guide you and put you into the ministry. Who among you now wants power for this direction he has chosen? Raise your hand up. The direction that God is leading you to serve. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for empowerment in the direction of service. And I ask that the direction of your service will be energized. And you begin to make profit. You begin to make gain in the area that God has called you to serve. And in these coming days, you start to record stupendous results as a result of the little things you're doing. Open your eyes and look at me. We were doing Holy Communion in that church. And I saw a mad woman passing. And my wife used to go to the lorry town and carry mad women from the streets and bring them to our house. And we look after them till they are well. Because we have a motherless baby's home. And out of the 80 children that are in the home, six of them are from mad women. And when some of the mad women refuse to release their baby, you want to collect the baby from her on the street. She gave birth on the street. And you want to take the baby, she will not give you the baby. And because of that, Many times, mommy will take both baby and the mother. And in my house today, we have eight of them. We're taking care of the mother, we're taking care of the baby. So when I saw one on the street carrying baby, now back, I told mommy, I said, this is another one. But she will not release the baby. Even though she's mad. Sunday morning, so I go to church, I said, oh, shucks. I've seen a mad woman on the street. She's going very wild. One of you, two of you won't even be able to arrest her. You'll be like four because of the way she's walking. You need to be like four before you can handle her. It's a wrong. If she does not branch away from the main street, you will get to her in about one mile. But if she branch off, you will lose her. Wrong. So they took a vehicle and ran. And when I wanted to start preaching, I said, my sermon to you in the church today will not be long. The reason is because I have asked the ushers to help me pin down a mad woman on the road. You are the 99. There is nothing wrong with you. So I will not be staying here long. And I started my preaching. Ten minutes into my preaching, the head usher came and walked up to me on the, on the stage and said, Sir, the mad woman you talked about, we've met her. And we brought her back and she's sitting in front of the church. So, please, preach whatever you want to preach to us. You shouldn't shortchange us because of a mad woman. So I told the church, I said, you see how she's... The, the, Chief Usher is telling me, say, you know, I told you about a mad woman just in the said, The ushers have brought the mad woman it's in front of the church. Then they clap. He said, Continue. So I continue another 10 minutes. The head usher came again. I said, Sir, you know, today is Holy Communion. And we've eaten Holy Communion before you came. The wine of the Holy Communion that remained. We wanted to pour it away. But one of us said, this woman will be walking with the baby. We saw a person selling puff puff inside show glass. 
So we bought some puff puff and gave it to her. She ate. We gave puff puff to the baby. The baby ate, but there's no water to drink. I said, huh? He said the wine that remain, that the church drink remain, want to pour it away. But one of the ushers said, let's pray on it and give her. And we, they prayed on it, and we ushers gave it to her, and she's healed. He said the woman is healed. He said the woman is healed. Where is she? He said we ushers look among ourselves. Your house is not far. You can see the size. You are like the size. God bring good. How about the baby? You have a baby like this one. God bring good. So they ran to their houses that were not far from the church, and they have dressed up the woman, and she sat in the congregation. So I said church. You hear, if I've not been briefing you from the beginning of this story, you would think somebody is making something up. The woman I told you about that was in front of the church, I knew I was, I was, I was in a very horrible situation because there are members of the church who come late. When they come and they see my woman in front, sitting in front of the church, they will not enter, they will go back home. There are those who have a habit of coming late. Even if you tell them Jesus is coming next week, the, the time they will come is the time they will come. And they, when they come and meet man, the woman in front of the church, they go back home. So I myself don't want her to stay long in front of the church. But then I told the church that the ushers gave the woman the remnant of the wine you drank left. And she's now well. And she's now in the church together with her baby. And I announced the church, please, can I see this woman? The woman got up and started coming to me at the altar with her baby. And I could not recognize that it was the same woman I saw 30 minutes ago. Everything about her had changed. Oh, Where am I going on this story? I wasn't the one that prayed for her. I wasn't the one that looked for government for her. I wasn't the one that looked for government for the child. Oh, Different people in the church can operate their unit yes, sir. in such a way that the church can be growing through the operations of the units. People come to church and listen to the choir alone and say, hey, I must be here next Sunday. People see how we conduct ourselves. Women at the door. The welcome sir. Please come in. We would like to see you next Sunday. We would like to sit where it's comfortable. Can I find you a seat? Ushers. But when we assign people to go to church, we do not add character. Because that one is here. How did John, is it John or Andrew, come up to Jesus and said, Sir, I have found a boy who had five goats? We're talking of thousands of people. How did you locate a boy in the crowd? Jesus said, go and bring it. It's easier to locate it than to collect it. It takes character sir, to look at the boy. What's the the back? I know why you run it. Bam! I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? You are my baby. We are both so different. We are not like that. We are both so different. We are both Oh, 
God is going to do a miracle in this place today. That's why you give you fire. You know you can't finish five years, you can't finish five. God knows. <laughs> There's a way you will be discussing with the boy that look. In fact, God will be using your name. Two thousand years, they will still be reading your name. They will be reading about what you did. Can you bring it? God is going to do a miracle with it. And the fish. And the boy will give it. Sorry, the one Jesus said, uh, the one you say you saw five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus said, go and bring it. It's easier to cite it. Say, my own. Abi, I got it on the road. Yes, sir. Say, my own now. But to get it from the boy takes your own personal character and your own ability. And when you were sent to go and bring it, the, your, your skill to collect it was not given. You were no man designing your own ware. You no man designing your own ware. You were no man designing your own ware. Character. Father, I pray for everyone that there will be character development. Amen. That we enable us to carry out our duties with great success. Amen. And there will be no failure Amen. by any percentage. Amen. I pray that God will begin to use you Amen. more than you are able to think about. Amen. You will surpass your own expectation. Amen. When next we see you at work, you will be a master. Amen. You yourself would have developed disciples. Amen. You will not have to learn into a disciple. Amen. It will not be you alone. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can do better than that. Please stand your hands together for Jesus. What a time. What a time. Thank you so much, Daddy. We are so, so grateful. Deeply, deeply appreciative of this wisdom. I call it this wisdom that you have freely given to us here this morning. We are so blessed. Can we put hands together one more time? Please be seated one minute. We are going to close shortly and uh, just give me like three minutes um, to just highlight one or two things that I believe is good for our memory. Hallelujah. The question is, are you a nothing brother or a nothing sister? Are you a nothing pastor? Or you are a nothing minister of God? This is something you need to consider and deeply think about. How does steam do in your hand? It dies or lives. How does things live? If they put things in your hand, that thing will either die or live. What are the kind of stories and explanations you build around failure? Remember Pastor Francis' story. Don't forget it in the hall. Hallelujah. The next thing I want to say to us about three of them is What is the meaning, exactly the way that they put it? What is the meaning of being in a church and you are not doing anything? I don't know if you are in that category. What is the meaning? That means it is a meaningless life to be in a church and you are doing nothing. It does not matter who you are. That's another food for thought. What do you do in church? What impact are you making? How relevant are you to the vision of the church and to the growth of the church? There is an advantage we have that we shouldn't lose. The opportunities and the advantages. I was in the last week when Moses Arantzala was telling me about 
Is it summer day in Lagos where they run about six services? Six services. One one hour. One one hour. Sir. It is inside that one hour where I will sleep. Inside that one hour, I don't even know if there will be space for some school. Will there be space for some school in the one hour service? Will that be Bible study? Will you be able to study? No. But those are the glorified stories that everybody clamor and clap for. It's very dangerous to be part of that type of crowd. Your small size here gives you an opportunity to be excited, to be cited, identified, and applied. I've said many things in one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If we are in such in thousands, and we are doing 45 minutes service, 45 minutes, you move in, and that 45 minutes, you go. We will not be able to set you and apply you. You can't grow. I'm an agreed. I'm a swear for vegetables. The seeds are small. You first of all put them on the bed, and they are many together. Sir, if you want them to grow, you transplant them. If you leave them like that, in that multitude of, after a while, one my yellow, none of them will get to the market. None of them will carry any monetary value. If you want them to grow and have a value in the market, you transplant them. You move them away from this place. Where are they are doing? There is a danger in that type of an arrangement when we are doing six services, 45 minutes each. And the crowd is so many. I know what I'm saying now, many of you won't understand, but what do I care? <laughs> because you want that, that's the one you call success. I'm an agreement. Go and ask anybody. That you, are, you are here, sir. Animal Every animal science, God bless you, sir. <laughs> Anybody that is doing a Greek and you put vegetable on a, on a bed like that, one pop, shua, after a while, they will become yellow and none of them will reach the market. They will never grow because the food is that is available under the ground is not enough to go around. There are too many standing. Root. And there are too many looking for food, and the food is not there, so they become yellow. So ministry opportunities that we have, because right now our number is small. The smallness of our number affords us in leadership to be able to grow you individually and to be able to apply your talent and your gifts. And when we get to heaven, it is this achievement you have, what you have done with your deed that will be rewarded. He said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everybody according as his work, not according to his faith. Come on, put your hands together. Wow, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. The Bible says, Faith without works is dead. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, don't take these things for granted. So much wisdom of God being poured forth. The impartation you need is taking place already. It is impartation of wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. And it's the principal thing. Let me just say two more things that he said. And I will I allow you to ask questions if you have any. Praise the Lord. You can have a call without a ministry. I can relate to that very well. And that's why sometimes it appears some of us are like old school. When you see young men, because they can cast out their roots, because some people can follow under the anointing, they begin to gallivant around. They can even put apostles behind their name. There's no ministry, it's just a sense of a call. There is a journey between when you 
sense of a call. And when you are actually confirmed in ministry, even at that, there are stages of development in that ministry assignment. And God will put you under a man as you grow in ministry. Hallelujah. People don't understand this part I just said. Every look at the, 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 the pattern of God. God grows his men from the back of other men that he has raised. The pattern is everywhere in the scripture. You cannot say that, yes, I, have been, I went to the mountain and God opened my eyes and I see vision and God anointed me. I don't need to listen to anybody. You already lost the character that he was talking about. Because if you are going to last, whatever God has spoken to you, whatever God has said to you, whatever God has given you, must be driven with a character of obedience and compliance. That's another thing he said. The character of obedience. And God will test you. It's going to test your heart until God satisfies you that you are now, you pass the test of obedience and compliance. This is very important. It might take you five years, the call is still there. It might take you 10 years, the call is still there. But God will not put the oil that is going to make you speak a ministry on your head, even though you have the calling, until God can confirm that you have passed the test of character and compliance. Hallelujah. And one, one of the ways God does that is to keep you behind the man. He will send you go there and he will see what you are going to do with it. Do this. Stand up. Sit down. Don't move. Hallelujah. But most of the young people that we have around today, they don't want to listen to that. They believe that God has called them and the next day they must start ministry. And you see them hanging around graphic designers and it's so cheap now, you know, and then they begin to do ambiguous and process and all of that. Praise God. Because somebody, your spiritual father, your head is bigger than his head inside your view. The Lord help our hearts in Jesus' name. Do you have anybody with question? There's any part of this that all right, please. Sir, can I take questions? Okay. Let's just take two or three. Yes. Christmas. So my question is that I have two questions sir. My first question is if I am called to be an evangelist, can I see operating an office of a prophet? I think you understand my question, sir. I am called to be an evangelist. Can I operate like a prophet? As in, that is my first question. The second one is uh, something that happened uh, recently. A, a boy that I knew, I know very much, Ramat. So, and we caught him and we took him to the church, tried to conduct him in the last of the So, a uh, pastor was there and some other members of the church. So when we were praying, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. The boy was manifesting a lot of spirit, we were letting, and that will manifest. Then I told the man of God that, uh, let me lay my hands on him because of an encounter I had with Jesus Christ a few days to that time. So when I was tempted and I laid my hands on him, and there was a change. But well, eventually I was attacked as a result of that. So what I was processed to have, I was denied of that as a result, and I had it in my dream, and they told me that it was as a result of what you did. So when I now shared with the man of God, the man of God said, ah, next time I should not try that, if you are not called to be a deliverance minister, that you should not engage yourself in such uh, events. So my question is now that, and I the man of God, the Bible says, for this time shall follow them that believe, that in my name they shall cause some devils. So does it mean, God calls some special people for a deliverance ministry. So, so that is my question. That, does it mean God calls some, some people for that such work 
or every word call the child of God can engage yourself in such a thing. The, the, your first question is that I'm an evangelist. Can you operate in the office of God? Okay, okay. You see, the, the two offices are distinct. And the objectives are distinct. The evangelist is a soul winner. He wins souls. He brings souls from the wild, domesticate them. The church pastor takes over from what he brings from the wild and church them. That's where the job of the evangelist ends. But if he works hard, he can grow his ministry into the office of a prophet. But when you operate a prophetic office, you are less mobile. The evangelist obeys, go ye. The office of a prophet operates, come ye. Are looking at me. Do you understand? Yes. One has his ministry on the legs. Joshua. He's a mobile man. He goes out looking for souls wherever they are. The prophet is not a man. He's a stationary man. They come to him to inquire, to take direction. The prophet is a goma. And if you are not careful and you want to develop the two, you will get a mix up in which certain aspect of you want to go, certain other aspect won't. You are not following me. If you are following me, you should complete the same thing. Stay. So certain part of you want to go. The other part wants to stay. So you'll be confused. And you can easily be confused by the revenue that comes. The prophet gets more revenue. The evangelist doesn't get anything. In fact, he spends. The people who come to the prophet are always doing prophet of him. There's no evangelist of him. I've never heard of him. Nobody pays tithes to him. There's no man. Nobody pays tithes to him because he has no man. You do crusade here. You carry your own. You go and crusade. You don't have men. You are a good man. It's a tough job. So, if I were to advise you, I would advise you to choose one. One is tuning the evangelist. One is singing the prophet. And usually people grow in ministry. Yes. To grow from the office of an evangelist to grow into the office of a prophet. And we do so normally as we grow older. And your ability to, to go is reducing because of age. Then you move into the office of the office. The wear and tear in the evangelist world is high. No food, no money. The risks are there. Apostle Babalola, I met uh, Fosha the last week. Fosha from the of uh, Baba B. Uh, he told me that Joseph I. Babalola died in his house, in his father's house. Wow. He was like 10 years old when Babalola came and said, it's already late, and his father said, well, you can come in and sleep 
tomorrow morning we continue the journey. Right? Babalala told his father that he had not slept for 20 years. And asked his father if he can get a shogura, but he didn't take it. So his father gave him cover wood. The father told him there's no bed. So the father vacated his own bed and asked the father to sleep. The father looked for mat and slept on the floor. The following morning they went to wake the Allah up. He had not slept for 20 days. Hmm. And Allah died at the age of 56. Allah was not old when he died. And the last night, the pastor at me, he arrived in the day, in, in the night. And he said it was too late to continue his journey. You can stay with me. That was the last night for the last night of life. He had not slept for 20 days. Evangelists are not normal people. They have certain energy. But the wear and tear in that ministry, the people who are in that ministry do not understand how to manage themselves. They don't they don't last. They can't last. Now, I don't last. I think I've not seen for 20 minutes. And you are moving. Last. So what is missing in ministry today is the absence of counsel. This one, Samadhi Ami is doing. When Samadhi Ami was in the morning, he was riding on cycle to my house. In the company of church. The motorcycle judge used to bring him to my house with Samadhi Ami in those days. The motorcycle was so that you have to push him to walk. And when Samadhi Ami pushed the motorcycle, pushed the motorcycle, pushed the motorcycle, and judge the people he will engage the gear as well. Start to walk. If he stops, the motorcycle will, will stop again. So the motorcycle must not stop once he starts walking. Somebody will jump on it and be waving at me as they would have one other way around. Now, on other words, six services by listening. If there are wise cancers, my boy, somebody, this one you are rejoicing that you are having a crowd, six services, 45 minutes each. <laughs> Somebody will call him and say, look, that is not how to raise people. It is better you break. Lagos is so big. Carry some 1,000 or 500 of them. Let them go to K2 and be doing service there. Then you buy another drum set. Instead of using one drum set for six services, carry another 1,000. Go to another go to another drum. Spread them the Babylonian spirit that says we will remain in one place. Babel. When God says spread, that spirit is what is affecting those fellows that we are calling successful stories in Lagos. There's a offering our offerings as we close this morning session. Oshas, can you give us the envelopes quick? You can decide to be an usher right now, responding to this message if they are not sufficient. <laughs> yes, just receive an envelope. And God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy to the praise. Adonai, we bless your name. Thank you. Can we please rise as we pray? Father, we thank you for the privilege to give an offering. You bless our heart today. We come with this token of appreciation. Let your blessing multiply upon our lives. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. And if you want to do a transfer, can we have the account on the screen? Let's
to be whole and to be Shame it all if you try to wear a moon to be Yes. Sure.